Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Whatever time it is for you, I'm Psycho. It's time for our Let's Play Train Simulator Classic. It's time today for the third and final of the uh, three-part tutorial scenarios. We're going to be heading through the most famous part of the Sal de Carlisle route, going through the Ribblehead area today. This is what the route is known for. Let's go ahead and check it out for the first time. Hello, driver. We are now about to embark on a final leg of our route learner as far as settle. Now at the highest point of the rail network, save for a couple of small climbs, much of the route now heads downhill into North Yorkshire. You are clear to depart immediately. Let's depart immediately. So uh, we'll get rid of this, we'll get in the cab, and we'll get ourselves moving. As with the first two stairs, we are in the trusty class 66. Wow. Um, I'm glad the horns don't do that now. This again is version 1 of the Class 66. So the um, Class 66 that you can get today in uh, the standalone DLC uh, or in any other route that has it, such as the Airdrie extension. That's more of a version 2 of the uh, train. Granted, the uh, version 2 of the train, the standalone version anyway, uh, has improvements from Armstrong Powerhouse that are not applied to this version of the train. Uh, if there was a pack that improved that that pack's no longer available for this uh, version. Again, I don't know if there was or wasn't, but uh, here we come to a 60 mile per hour speed limit. I was about to slow down for the 30, but we're good to go 60 again. And um, yeah, because the pack doesn't apply to this one, we're not going to see the improvements on this one. Coincidentally enough, the pack also does not apply to the Airdrie Extension version either, or the one from Trent Valley, I don't believe. Uh, I don't know if it will in the future, if there'll be an update to include it, but uh, I'm sure that people who know how to will probably make it work themselves anyway, so not a big deal. Most people will use a standalone one of the scenarios anyway, so it's not like this one will be used very often. Like I said, the only time I would think this one would have a lot of use outside of this route would be to... Um, potentially replace the version 1 train standalone from pack 24023. Other than that, this one probably would just be recycled. Anyway, we're heading towards the what I believe is the longest tunnel on the route. I think that's the Blee Moor Tunnel. So we're going to be starting off with that tunnel today. I think that's what the uh, marker up ahead is referring to. We will find out. Or maybe that's the tunnel right there. I don't know. We'll see. I'd say we are definitely in the more scenic part of the journey, if you ask me. So let's take a quick look at this window. Nice view over there. And over on this window, well, a hill now. But it was nicer a moment ago. I was not fully paying attention to my speed there because I was looking to see if the marker coming up. Whoopsie. Well, you can't have a perfect run, can you? I was too busy trying to look at the views that are coming up, such as this one. I was paying more attention to that. <laughs> Whoopsie. So I believe we're now going to see the Blaine Moore Tunnel information here. We are now approaching one of the great engineering marvels of the Zelda Carlisle line, Blaine Moore Tunnel. Taking over four years to complete, this tunnel is the longest on the route at a distance of 2,629 yards and lies over 500 feet below the top of the moor on which it is named. There it is. I don't think I turned my... Yeah, my headlights go off between scenarios for some reason. Forgot to turn them back on. They're back on now. The, um... As you can see, the alert was for a 35 mile per hour speed restriction, so we are going to we're going to be cutting that here, obviously.
Starfish being a little finicky right now. Yeah, they're gaining speed at a 18% uh, break application. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Just a reminder how uh, weak the brakes are on the uh, train at a low application. This happens with a number of trains, actually, I think. Like 29% brake application, the brakes are not going on. Hello. In fact, I'm going to have to lower the brakes even, put the brakes on even more here just to make sure I don't uh, bust the speed. Because we're going to be having another cut in speed coming up as well. So we're now under the 35 limit. Emerging from the Magnificent Tunnel, we are now approaching another engineering marvel, Ribblehead Viaduct. The speed limit over the viaduct is 30 miles per hour, so you will now need to reduce your speed. What about for exiting the Blay Moor Tunnel? We had to reduce it for that. Like, look at the speed increase here on the 1 in 100. This is quite a drop. I'm not sure if that alert was for the 30 or for a signal at the time. I didn't notice the uh, board going by because I was looking down at the uh, HUD. Let's see what's coming up. I'd love to get off this downhill gradient right now. I don't need the help right now. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we're getting stuck over 30 here. Yeah, we have no timing, so we're not really rushing, but... So now we're under a 30 mile per hour speed limit. You can see the arm is raised up ahead. We are green. And a lot of this part of the journey is going to be moving the brake back and forth. Because it is downhill all the way it looks like. Here comes the next tutorial marker. With 24 arches, uh, watch the speed, there we go. With 24 arches, the viaduct is around 400 meters long and sits 32 meters above the, Ribble, the River Ribble Valley at its highest point. Following surveys in the 1980s and attempts by British Rail to close the line completely, remedial work was done, along with the line uh, being single-tracked to enable the route to stay open, I think is what that said. Does that mean we're on the viaduct now? No, it's not the viaduct. We'll come back, we'll get another view in a second. This looks like the viaduct right here. Are we on it now? I think we are. Yeah, it's definitely the viaduct. There's your screenshot, ladies and gentlemen. There's your screenshot of the day. Let's zoom in a little bit. There's your screenshot of the day, right here. These are the money shots right here. Notice I slowed down quite a bit there as well. Was that a red? Did I just cross a red signal? After crossing the impressive viaduct, we now approach the station at Ribblehead. When opened in 1986, the station had only one platform due to the northbound platform having been demolished to make way for the construction sidings. However, in 1990, Excuse me. In 1993, a replacement platform was built slightly further south, meaning the up and down platforms are now staggered. So 
this had to be the up platform, now we're entering a 60, and now we're coming to the down platform. I believe I have that right. I think up is towards London, down is away from London, so the down platform would be the one that we pass second, going away from London. We're still on a downhill, so I'm letting the speed increase itself, but now that we have crossed fully into the 60, we're going to go ahead and increase ourselves. I feel like that signal was actually red back there, and that might have actually been a mistaken red signal. So I'm a little questioning as to why that was. In any case, the next station we should see on the line will be the Horton in Ribblesdale station. I believe that's about three miles away. We're coming to another downhill, so I'm going to cut the speed completely at this time. After Horton and Ribbledale, there's another bit of countryside driving here that we're going to come to settle. That'll be the last station I believe we're going to see on this incarnation of the route. And then we'll move on from that. Now I have noticed, and this is a programming note, I have noticed that the next two scenarios, which are the first two career scenarios, are also very, very short. I think they're 15, 20 minutes each or something like that, maybe with 25. So I kind of uh, want to see if I can get all three of those recorded today and get the um, get them up for the weekend releases. That'll save me having to worry about uh, something else uh, while I'm away for what will be at least a few days here. So I want to see if I can get all three of those up and ready for you here. I'm going to see about starting to play those right after I finish this scenario before I even start editing this scenario. So uh, when this comes up, you're going to probably have two videos uh, for the for number four and five right behind this on the weekend is what my guess is right now. Uh, I'll decide what I want to do after that starting Tuesday. I might go, I might stay here for the sixth scenario on Tuesday, which is about 50 minutes. Also a career scenario, but I'm not going to be recording that one uh, until after I get back if I do that. I might decide to do something else by then. So I'm kind of committing myself now to the next two scenarios. I just have to get them all recorded so I can get them all edited for, edited for you. As you can see, as long as I pay attention, this is actually a very easy route to maintain speed on. The only question is, uh, how easy will it be to maintain the scorings on the scenarios, given their older era scenarios, within a year of the Donner Pass ones, in fact, I believe is what they are. We'll find out. So I'm moving the uh, speed constantly up and down here because of this 1 in 100 uh, gradient that we're on. Can't think of the word all of a sudden. You can see our next, uh, as I've been calling them, touch marker ahead. So uh, we're going to move to our next uh, tutorial information here. I don't think tutorial is really the best way to uh, describe information about the roots. I think it's just information that applies whether you're a tutorial or not. The thing is, it only shows up because it's in a tutorial, hence its name being a tutorial. This is downhill all the way to uh, the Horton and Ribblehead, I believe. Well, sorry, Horton and Ribblesdale. I said that wrong. I knew that sounded wrong. <laughs> I 
as you can see, I'm working the speed in a five mile per hour uh, gap here. I want to try and stay within 55 to 60. This will distract me. Descending further into North Yorkshire, we now approach Horton and Ribblesdale. Along with several other stations on the line, this station was closed in 1970, only to reopen in the mid-1980s. Well, this sounds like a normal thing, doesn't it? And I dropped below 55 for a moment. We didn't get a really good look at the station, so let's look at it from behind. Here you go. Very, very small station, as you can see. Hitting 60 again. Let's try not to have another speeding penalty, shall we? Is that a whistle board? I thought I recognized a W there, so I thought I better blow the whistle. <laughs> In fact, that was a level crossing, so that was a good catch on my part there. Just saw the whistle board on the other side of the track now. And 158 going by. A two car 158 it looks like. The downhill has ended so I'm going to go ahead and uh, idle the speed here because we have another downhill starting. So I'm actually okay losing a little bit of speed here. I don't need to stay at 60. I'll be cutting it anyway. And the gradient now begins again. Begins anew. So coming from the other direction, this that was a little break in the gradient uh, and speed gaining. Now we're going to start gaining, or speed having to push against the uh, hill, I should say. For us, it's a break in having to use the brakes, ironically enough. I'll let you insert the rim shot if you like that one. Wasn't even meant to be funny. We're now on a 1 in 200, so again, we have a little uh, pause in having to... Uh, we're still gaining a little bit of speed, but not much. We'll see how that keeps going. Back to a 1 in 100. So I'm going to hit the brakes a little bit just to be sure here that I'm going to be safe. That was a good call because we seem to be gaining speed again. It seems like a faster gain than previously, actually. Breaks. So I'm not sure this could be our final marker here. If it is, then it would be referring to Settle. If it isn't, then there might be another uh, reference to Settle Junction up ahead. I don't think there's anything between uh, the two stations here to uh, make note of that I noticed anyway. Okay, I'm going to make sure my speed, limit is, my speed is down to 55, then we'll read the marker. Well, 54. As we near the end of our journey, we approach the final tunnel on this section of the line, Stain Forth Tunnel. We're in it now. Please start reducing your speed accordingly for the upcoming stop at Settle. So we're not going to see Settle Junction. We are going to stop at uh, Settle itself. So I'm going to watch for Settle to appear on the HUD, then I'll start slowing down. There's an indicator that might be where we're stopping.
Trucha Marker 7, Settle P1. Got it. <laughs> Is that the same marker? No, they're different markers. Okay. Interesting. As the markers have disappeared off the HUD, I've gone ahead and cut the brakes off for a moment because we're going to have at least a couple minutes based on that. This is what I call HUD logic. As you can see, I put the brakes back on. I'm going to start bringing it down to about 30 now. Knowing we're going to be gaining a little speed, so I'm going to bring it a little under that. That'll do. We're still on a 1 in 100, which does, from what I can tell, seem to continue. It might be a little smoother. It might be a 1 in 200 by the time we get to settle, but it is downhill from what I can see going through settle. There is a... Uh, drop in the platform there that I can see. So we're going to get some information about Settle and then we're going to get uh, to make our stop at Settle from what I can see. So I'm going to go slow enough that we can actually read the information while still coming to a stop after the box disappears. So we're going to keep our speed low for the purpose of uh, having the grand entry here. Why not, right? So I think we were timed for 25 minutes. I think it took a little bit longer. We're getting, coming close to uh, closer to half an hour here by the time we finish. So here's the reading. Let's get down to 15, then we'll do our reading. Slightly more. There we go. All right. Bring up the text. And here we are, approaching the final destination of your route learning journey today. Please slow down, prepare to stop at Settle, where I will be taking over for the remainder of the journey to Leeds. Why is he going to be taking over? Why is Bob doing the driving? A, because I need a break by now. It's been, you know, a good hour and a half of me driving, so you take breaks. Uh, and uh, Bob has to do his own driving to, for, you know, for clock purposes. But realistically, it means we're not going to be having access to the drive to Leeds uh, it has not been officially done as a route by DTG. So uh, this is the final station on the route that we have access to. So we'll be stopping here at Settle. Bob will take over. We're not going to see it. In real life, I'd say, come on, I can do this. And here's our stop at Settle. Let's go ahead and look at the train as we finish. So we finish here at Settle. You can see the Settle signal box uh, right behind us on the right there. So we are going to finish our uh, journey here. Let's see what the career scenarios can get for us uh, or get us in trouble with here. Shall we? Thank you, driver, and I hope you've enjoyed your first run over the Sal de Carlisle line. Hopefully I didn't bore you too much with the history of the... Oh, sorry. Um, did I fall asleep? Um, let's uh, go ahead and uh, wrap up here. Have a wonderful day, evening, night, whatever it is for your part of the world. See you for the first couple of career scenarios. Uh, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. You'll be able to see them probably on the weekend is what I'm going for here. So I'll see you for those. I'm Cyclone. Bye-bye.